all right. So I guess we would move on to the minutes then um, of, and if anybody remembers actually what happened during this meeting, I'll, they get extra credit. <laughs> I remember, I remember the discussion about doing things proactively in the summertime. I think it was Fred at the time that encouraged that. I see that noted in the minutes and obviously Corona got in the way of that. Um, but I looked over the minutes and they all seemed as consistent with my recollection of what we did 11 months ago. I move we, we approve the minutes. I second. I all right, so now that, because we're remote, we need to do a roll call vote. So um, I'll just go across my screen. Um, Nicholas? Yes. Me? Yes. Uh, Brian? Yes. Are you voting, Brian? Yes, I can vote on minutes and things. Okay. Yep. Uh, Fred? Staying. Uh, I Dan? had no idea what was discussed. <laughs> it's, it's uh, Dan? In minutes. <laughs> yes. Darcy? Yep. And Maureen? Yes. Actually, I think, Brian, I think you're right. I don't. Originally, you were listed yourself as non voting. Maybe you're just selectively non voting. No, I think, I think you're right. I am non voting. One of these I vote on, one of them I don't. <laughs> All right. So that motion has passed. So minutes are approved. Um, so then let's get to number three, review and discuss capital projects proposed for funding in fiscal year 2023. Um, so in similar years, this like, a memo has gone out to the department heads and boards and committees um, requesting projects and requesting projects for the up upcoming fiscal year and also um, to the best of their ability for 10 years out. And I don't typically get um, projects beyond one or two years that that come in, um, which of course is something that I would love to um, work on, but that's sort of beyond this committee and it's sort of a department head sort of boards and committees and 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 part of it's me too in terms of some of the some of the administrative buildings, but um, we we try to do the best we can and, and project out as far as we can. Um, but the reason we're here is because uh, the Capital Improvement Planning Committee issues a report to the um, Select Board and Finance Committee on recommendations for capital projects. Um, that's loosely, de loosely defined as um, you know, projects that are over um, $5,000. Um, I, I think we should have future discussion about, you know, one of the questions that I have that we should talk about a little bit later is sort of a software, right? Is you know, we have a request for software. Is that is that a capital project or not? Um, I don't really know how to. I don't really know how to how to classify that. But I included it anyways, um, and we can have a discussion about that. Um, because I, it was submitted to me, so I, I passed it along. Um, what would happen otherwise? It would go straight to the finance committee. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a, a sort of a separate list that I have of. of what I, I guess consider miscellaneous expenditures that, that that get moved on to the select board and finance committee. For what it's um, worth, I've been in previous situations where substantial acquisitions of software, typically $25,000 or more, um, especially when they involve long-term commitments like maintenance contracts, support contracts, things of that nature. They are, they have been, and, and justifiably are treated as capital expenditures. I mean, even though it's not physical, like a truck, right. it is still an investment. And so it makes sense for these kinds of things to get uh, treated, be treated as capital equipment. I, I'd agree with that. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so. Why don't we why don't we move ahead with that as our sort of understanding? Um, so in, in terms of the process in the past, the uh, pre-COVID, and this committee had 
held site visits. Um, we had we had kind of finally got that set up, and I think we did it once, maybe twice, maybe uh, maybe twice, um, and then sort of the start of the pandemic happened, and that sort of got um, put on hold. So, I mean, I, I think if the committee wanted to do it, we could do it safely. Um, if there's a need for it, I, I think we could do it. Um, but I don't, I don't know what everybody's comfort level is, um, or people could go individually and um, visit some of these places. The one I'm not sure about is access to the elementary school. Um, obviously, mm -hmm. I think that's still pretty strict in terms of um, visitors and things like that. So maybe an after hours visit might work mm -hmm. best there if we if we want to do that. Um, I think we could definitely arrange that. Mm -hmm. um, but so I'm not sure if we want to talk about that now. Or I mean, my plan was to sort of go through each of these submissions and compile a list of questions that we could send back to the people who are proposing these projects. I have a lot of questions about some of these. Um, some of the submissions were not as lengthy or detailed as I would have liked. Um, and then I guess we maybe maybe determine at the end if we want to, um, you know, set up a site visit or, or want to go see some of these facilities or equipment. Um, I think that's a good idea. We go through this tonight. I agree. I like that as a process. And we're not trying to make any decisions or assign ratings tonight. Um, in fact, we're just trying to keep an open mind and hear everything, get questions answered, and then start to do rankings and prioritization at a next meeting and maybe decide towards the end of tonight which of these most likely would need, in addition to questions, answer the site visit. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess we could start, well, I'll start down, just I'll start with the memo. Um, but before we do that, I just wanted to talk a little bit about, I sent out the, the full capital improvement plan. It's kind of a working document that, that it's been created. There's there, the previous fiscal years are hidden on, on the spreadsheet. Um, if people wanted to see them. Um, this is the just, Excel spreadsheet, Brian. Yeah. Yeah, and I just want to sort of just run through what each of these worksheets are really quick. Um, worksheet number two is just a spending overview. That's really that's really for me um, and how I would how I propose dealing with if all of these projects were proposed for funding, how I would recommend to the finance committee, you know, how we might pay for these. Um, so this is just sort of a um, it's just really a, a back of the napkin sort of scratch at this point. Um, I have a question just on that point, Brian. Since yep. you did send out a spreadsheet with various potential funding sources, it, it, I, I just needed a refresher. My recollection was that it's not the purview of this committee to decide how things get paid for merely to establish priorities over requests. Is that correct? Right. Yeah, that's been the, that's, Excuse me. That's been the position that that the CIPC has taken. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah. So this spreadsheet doesn't really factor into you know what the committee's doing, but I sent it out, so I wanted to explain what it is. Um, the next worksheet is um, that's the, that's an attachment that goes with the report. Um, when I send it out to the the, the finance committee and select board. Um, and it, again, that's sort of the financial piece of it that I work on later. Worksheet four are, are the, the projects, facilities, and buildings is worksheet four. And these are organized by department, um, department of boards and committees. Um, or I'm sorry, these are, these are organized by the actual facility or building itself. Vehicles and equipment <clears throat> is worksheet five. That's, um, usually by department. And then worksheet six is where I sort of stick projects that I'm not really sure fit into either place. Um, um, worksheet seven is a is a listing of our outstanding debt. 
Um, you'll see that some of our past capital projects have, they were either lease purchase agreements or they were borrowed to, to fund. So while we're not looking at these projects, this, this plays into sort of the financial part of it because there's still, still payments that the town is making on these. Um, and worksheet eight is um, previously funded capital projects. Um, and these go back to, I think, 2016. And there's a percent complete all the way to the right. Um, and that just provides an update as to the status of, of previously funded capital projects. Um, this is something that the Finance Committee had been asking for a lot in the past. So um, that's also for if folks want to look at it. And again, I it's a question about those percentages again to clarify. Like in a yeah. case, for example, just picking a random line in 2022, the replacing carpets with tiles, it says that it's 50% complete. I'm trying to just better understand whether that means that enough funding was allocated or they have enough funding to do 100% and they don't need additional funding to get from 50% to 100%. That's an ongoing. That's an ongoing project. We've been doing it for a number of years. Okay. The schools. Yeah, yeah, they've been doing two or three rooms a year. Okay. I think we're almost done. Uh, but I agree. I was confused whether 50% complete meant of the money allocated for the three classrooms. They've only done one and a half of those classrooms or of the whole project that they initially envisioned. Is it 50% complete? I think I have... I think I had judged that based on the amount that they had expended. Um, and the last I knew, I don't know that they were all done with the current allocation, but we can, I can double check with Chrissy. I was just trying to understand whether something less than a hundred percent meant that there was a outstanding financial obligation to be covered in 23 or beyond. It doesn't necessarily mean that. No, it, it might mean that they they have sufficient funds, but the project just hasn't okay. been completed for, I guess, could be a number of reasons. We could probably better uh, better state it by putting down uh, phase one, two, or three of, <clears throat> of our projects that we okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we want to start start on the projects. Yes. Um, and I'll sort of give brief overviews when I say the project name, and we could figure out if we want um, to ask for more information. And again, I, I hope you all saw the the information that was. It might have been a separate attachment in the email, or it might have been in the same file. But as the memo, there was the supporting docs at the back. Um, and as you could tell, some were one sentence emails and some were a little bit more detailed than that. So, um, so the first one on the list is athletic. So department of athletic fields, the project equipment is accessibility improvements to the restrooms and parking lot at Hurley Park. Um, just say to restrooms and driveway and parking lot at Hurley Park. So this is kind of what it sounds like. It's to, it's to pave the parking lot and the parking lot and driveway at Hurley Park and to also um, renovate all the restrooms um, in the pavilion and to bring those up to, um, to have those comply with um, the ADA and for also the parking lot to comply with ADA. Currently it's a in pretty rough shape, dirt gravel parking lot. The driveway is kind of broken pavement. Um, we did, uh, the town did a ADA, um, ADA, um, what's the other word? ADA transition plan and something else. We did it um, two years ago when we were seeking funding for the library um, accessibility improvements. And Hurley Park was what's identified as, as a place that didn't have great compliance with ADA. Um, currently, the restrooms are don't comply with um, the ADA standards and there's no access onto the slab that the pavilion is, is put on. Um, so there would be a, a sidewalk that would go from the parking lot over to the um, to the pavilion. 
so that those restrooms would be accessible from, um, from the parking lot. Um, and obviously we would have striping and handicap spaces and signage for the, for the driveway there. Um, so the, the town and not that, well, I shouldn't talk about money, but the, um, but I included it on the plan anyways, the town has received a park grant to pay for, um, it's about 60% of the, of the cost and we're seeking CPA funding for the rest. So, um, is that 60% of the 122? Or is 122 the 40% that's left? Um, so we're seeking a, around, I think it's around 55,000 in CPA funds. Um, the original yeah, it looks project- like, looks like the 62 is more like half of the total estimated cost. Yeah, we asked for some 15,000 in design funds to be appropriate as part of this from the CPA. Um, just in case we needed to do some for the for the conservation commission, uh, Sugarloaf Brook is really close, and there's steep slopes, and we're actually in. Um, it's it's mapped as critical habitat area because it's so close to the Connecticut River. There's endangered species there, so um, we wanted to have some funds available to do whatever design we needed to do for the drainage and things like that. So. I think my main question here, I, th I thought that the project was well described and well justified. I'm aware from planning board work that the town is at some ex financial legal exposure in these ADA situations. If, um, you know, if there is a, a grievance brought and that we're denying reasonable access to, to town facilities. So, um, so I think my main question back to um, the proponent in this case would really just to be have a little bit more insight into um, just may sort of you might say the reasonable nature of the um, costs plan for the roadway and for the uh, and for the bathroom renovations. Again, doing it makes seems obvious, and I think just having a little bit more sense that they're um, you know, that the fixtures are going to be, you know, not too cheap, not too expensive, just have a little bit more insight into, just get a little bit more assurance that, that 122 is a reasonable overall cost for the project. Again, we're not about the money, right? We're just about whether this is an important project. That is true. We, we don't want to get off on that tangent again. Thank you for the reminder. So, so we, so we really take, we we take the cost proposal at face value, and we really just look at the justification. And so we can be asking questions about the justification, but really not their choice of how they're going to do the project. Fair enough. Thank you. So do we have any other questions on that one? No. So I think it's pretty well good explained on page two. So okay. that bathrooms and driveways and upkeep. Okay. I, I, I do always wonder, um, I mean, I know it's, it's um, that Frontier pays for the all the upkeep and maintenance of the the fields uh, seems like this is a benefit to more than Waitley for us to do this, uh, and I mean maybe that's fine. We're getting this big this big grant is available possibly. Uh, uh, I guess I wonder if there's what. What percentage of the use of Hurleyhe is by Waitley residents versus other town people? Conway, Deerfield. Seems like a fair question. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, yeah. 
I don't know if the rec department knows. I, I can say that that um, we are going to be meeting with Frontier to talk about um, the agreement that that currently exists between uh, Waitley and Frontier. Um, because yeah, while they while they do some maintenance on the, you know, they do some maintenance on the on the park um, and the fields usually when it's off season. Um, so the complaints that I will, will get in was when it's off season, they, they don't do it right. So the baseball fields kind of grow in and then there's more work to do in the spring and things kind of aren't maintained and it's not winterized properly and stuff way beyond my, my knowledge, but other things sort of like trash removal, you know, weed whacking things that sort of go that sort of little extra mile to make it actually, you know, to make it look well kept and nicer. Mm -hmm. Um, and then obviously how much that they that they pay to the town. So, um, hey, nicer park, more money, right? Um, I, but I, I look at this, and I think that funding this is necessary as a defensive measure. I, I think both the accessibility and the state of the parking lot are lot are problems waiting to happen. Lawsuits mm -hmm. in particular. Um, and well, you know, the maintenance of the field and the deal with Frontier really doesn't even come into come into it that much. If we're just talking about the the driveway and the building, yeah, I would agree with you. I think uh, it, my thought has much to do with the softball field from last year and the batting cages and just all the improvements and. Uh, are we doing them for Waitley or are we doing them for the larger community? Well, I think we can talk about that when we get to the batting cages, which is next. Yeah, yeah. In terms of the handicap accessibility, that just has to happen by the town. We just have to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I might just ask one upkeep related question, which is when you have public facilities, um, you know, bathrooms and stuff like that, how is, let's just call it security handled, like are the restrooms locked up at a certain time during the season? And you know, how is that handled just so that we're not likely to see vandalism or other, other kinds of damage that could create other costs in the future? I, I'm fairly certain that they're, they're unlocked during the sports seasons. 24 mm -hmm. hours, seven days a week. Pretty much. Not in my experience, The um, when my kids played there, uh, the, the bathrooms would be unlocked during their game, but not always. And um, I think only when there was games. Hmm. But that may be that may be different now. I don't know. Yeah, I guess that requires somebody to lock them after they leave. I think, um, I think it depends on whether someone remembers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so there's there's no so we rely on 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 volunteers to and users to remember to do that if that's if that's the case um but every anytime i've done been down there i don't have a special key or anything and i was able to access them so um yeah i don't i don't mean to be the the you know the one who keeps drawing us all back here but aren't we just trying to decide if this is an important like the security and all of that, that's not what we're discussing. We're discussing whether we think this needs to be done. Agreed. That is, cor that is correct. Okay. All right. So if we could stay on task because my time's limited. All right. Batting cages. Yay or nay? <laughs> <laughs> that's better. <laughs> Maybe a future project. I would say future, yeah. Well, we're not making, also on that, we're not making decisions tonight. We're really just evaluating whether you have questions about this All right going over them well, and so, i do have questions about that like the batting cages that is a question of whether we should be covering that or frontier or both or a mix because that's not just or the, the various base, the it's various baseball leagues what's that the various yeah, baseball yeah. leagues that play there yeah. Yeah, because it's it, i mean the handicap accessibility we have to do because it's a town property but the batting cages are that's that's for everybody. Yeah, and everybody knows where the where the existing batting cage type thing is. As you pull There's in, a it's picture down the right. 
There's a pitching cage. Is that what you mean? Yeah, the one I, I think behind the pavilion. Behind the pavilion, yeah. yeah. I think that's that's what they're talking about. And um, they want to put in a new one, and this is the cost to do it. Um, so, who's proposing um, it? Is this the rec committee? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The Chris Chris Williams is the is the new chair of the recreation commission. Yeah. Um, he's a baseball guy, so a lot of I think his focus has been to what he gravitates towards, and that's sort of the fields and the right. batting cages and things like that. So, um, this is the proposal. It's for double lane batting cage to replace the existing ones. Um, I think that's about it. Um, well, I guess I would suggest m maybe sending a question asking what, what's the percentage of, of weightly players using the field versus frontier versus, I mean, I don't, I don't know the process for how people get access well, put, to the fields, but. Put it this way, anytime it's used, it's used by Whaley and some other teams from other towns all the time. All the time, but Frontier does do a large percent. I live right across the street and I can tell you it's a lot of Frontier. So it's, and soft, it's like softball is district also. It's not just yeah. Waitley, that's a district. So. Yeah. Yeah. So there should be some like help from the district that's using it as their home home base. Yeah. Okay, I'll I'll have the conversation with them. Okay. Um so the next one is cemeteries, uh, fence replacement, installation of granite benches. Um, Darcy so added these because Neil had submitted them to the CPA for yep. funding. Um, do you, do you want to talk a little bit about them? Because you probably know more than I do. Quick, yeah, uh, I mean, the summaries. The, the, the East Whateley fence, the East Whateley cemetery fence has been damaged. It needs to be replaced, at least a section of it. Um, and we can't replace it with what's there already because it is an illegal type of chain link fence. So we're looking at it as our opportunity to, to change the fencing to something a little more appropriate to, to the cemetery. Um, and as far as the benches go, it was, uh, you know, just a, we're looking at it as a, an opportunity to increase some recreational uh, accessibility to, to the cemeteries. Has this been submitted? Was this submitted last year as well? This, yes. Last, well, it was just submitted in December to the CPA. It was not submitted to the C, CP, the, the capital planning last okay. year. I, I seem to remember from finance committee this coming, at least being mentioned last year. It, it might have been a different fence. It, it was, was talking to us because both cemeteries, that one and the one on the hill, were included and they were mentioned last year. Right. Yeah, this one, I just wanted for gates. I think it, I think it was for gates, right? Okay, because yeah. I just want to think. Yeah, I we, just want to sort of keep in mind how far we we push things down the road. Yeah, this wasn't the same. Pro I mean, it, we were discussing that the fence needed to happen, but we did not. I, we did not last year submit it to capital. Okay. Plan. Yeah. <clears throat> So does anybody have any questions on this that I can email Darcy? <laughs> this, seemed very, this seemed very detailed. Um, I guess my only question is, do they really need fences? If it is a question. The, the, the fencing, the, go ahead. Like we don't The split, rail, the split rail fence doesn't actually, I mean, it's just a visual, it's a, it's right. a visual fence. Which, which is really important for the farmers behind East Cemetery. They need to see where that line is because that's how the fences have gotten damaged in the first place. Because they go right over it with the equipment. It doesn't necessarily need to be fenced in the front, but I think there needs to be some board in the back. We're, we're open to figuring out what we need, but we just figured we'd price out fencing the three sides. There's one side that's all head, so we know we don't need anything there. Okay, want to move on? 
Um, elementary school flooring replacement. This is the next in the series of um, carpet, old, dirty carpet to tile, I think. Mm -hmm. And I think this so, may be one of the last ones for the classrooms, I think. And I don't know if you want to know um, the priority of what this, for these elementary school things, we had our own priority of all of these. Um, yeah, the, the, dish, the, the dishwasher was our first priority. And then the flooring was the second and then the air conditioning was the third priority for us, just so you're aware of that. Good to know. Maureen, so can you, could you say that again? The school's priority for these three, well, um, yeah. I'm counting the air conditioning as one, even though it's broken out into two phases. But our the school's priority is to replace the dishwasher first, and then the floor replacement, and then the air conditioning. The dishwasher is in really rough shape, and okay. I think like the oven last year, it um, is the original, and it's leaking, and it's been repaired multiple times, and also that it's been used a lot heavier than in the past. They're using it to sterilize, for example, Legos and other things from the <laughs> lower grades. <laughs> um, so sorry, I jumped ahead to that, but that was our priority. And can I, I can reach out to Bill Hildreth and he can get me sort of like the age of it and the condition and what his proposal yeah. is for a new one. I tried, I tried yeah. to get that information um, for you. Um, it goes back to when the school was built, Brian. I'm pretty it's sure the same it's as the, the stove. original. Yeah. It's all part of that kitchen, which is one unit when we built it. Right. So that would make it like 30 plus years old. Yes. Thanks. We got our money's worth out of it. I'm a little confused by the um, uh, the submitted capital planning documents that we were going that I was going through. There was uh, all this detail about the cemetery, and then the next thing after all the cemetery parts is this spreadsheet that I don't understand. Uh, and there's no justification or and and no explanation. And then there's a second page that says privacy fence on generator and some weird thing about keep maybe Keith Bardwell's name, but not completed. And I don't know what any of that means. This spreadsheet is the school's internal um, wish list for the next 10, 20 years or so. Or so. It's their working capital plan. I can't, okay. All right. So it's not really meant for, for our use. Necessarily. No, but we're down halfway down the first page for um, the three items that have priority one. Right. That's what we're talking about tonight. Okay. I could not find any description of the the phase AC installation project and the and the need for that in the elementary school. I can get, I can, I don't have that. I can get that yeah. for you. Um, I know that it was brought up um, earlier in the school year. There's no, there's only air conditioning in the offices and it gets really hot. You know, we've had the temperature seems to be getting hotter and hotter. Right. And this was brought I think up they even had at the they, same time we did the, uh, this was brought up and discussed the same time that we did the uh, uh, stove uh -huh. last yeah, year. And, and it was also on 2019's request. Uh, uh, yes. I assume that we're talking about the, this was replaced window AC units with mini splits. There is currently no AC in the classrooms at all. So the window units that are referred to maybe were in the office. They're in the office. That yes. was the office. And they've talked about having like kind of like a snow day, 
but for heat. Yeah. Because it gets really hot in there. Right. So are they talking about central air or a series of window air conditioners? I don't have that information. I don't know if okay. Brian has anyone mentioned to you, but they're talking about doing it in two phases because it, to do the whole set of classrooms would be too much money. I don't know if they're talking about split units or window units. Yeah, I think we'd need to know whether, you know, what we're talking about and what each phase, you know, how many rooms would be done in each phase or which rooms. Right. Well, and they're again, talking about two phases. So it would be half and half. There's two phases listed here. Yes. Right, but what, what would be entailed in each phase? You know, which rooms or, you know, wh where are the priorities there? Yeah, I think, I think we can... Wait, I think we can ask Bill uh, questions for all three of these in terms of the, the AC, sort of what's what's the equipment, what's the proposal. I mean, I think I think we know the need. I think Maureen said that. It, I would imagine it gets really hot in those classrooms. Um, but and then also it's it, this may we go over into the sort of the coronavirus relief funds in terms of can we tie this into ventilation in terms of the classrooms? Because that seems to be something that's in terms of our, if everybody agrees that keeping schools open is pretty important, then ventilation is really important. Um, so, um, Maureen, I had actually emailed, um, actually we should, I had emailed Chrissy about some some questions about ventilation and, and air purification stuff. So maybe we just need to have a bigger offline discussion about what the, what the plans are. Okay. Um, and then the flooring, Brian, it looks like. Brian, maybe yeah. this can be at least mentioned to the uh, COVID relief fund committee yeah. as, a, as a possible area for that money. Yeah. Yeah, I did have a question about that. If, um, you know, I would, did, do you know the amount that that grant is getting? And will that money, could that money be used for some of these capital improvement things? Because I heard the restrictions ha have been um, eased and that pretty much you can, there is, you know, there it was very restricted. There is a committee that? on that, right, Brian? There's a yeah, committee on that. We'll, we'll discuss it then. I was looking at it quickly before. This is the one that sort of stuck out to me as, as a possibility because I think there's a direct tie to yeah. Um, the pandemic. So, um, but there is a committee reviewing that. Yep. Yeah. So, it, so in, just to summarize, in terms of the in terms of the AC, we want to know sort of um, what they're what they're proposing for the system, and how many rooms each one is going to do, phase one as opposed to the phases. Right. Um, and then in terms of the flooring, it looks like it's three three rooms. And I assume that they're, they're carpet to tile as has been in the past. I'm assuming that too. Um, but we'll double check with Bill. Um, Bill Hildreth is the, the facilities director for Union 38 and Frontier Regional, right? I think, think I got that right. Yes. Um, yeah. And then I'll just, I'll ask him for some more specifics on the dishwasher, although just to confirm those, although I think... We know it's 30 years old and leaking that um, yep. and probably needs to be replaced. Um, and just a quick confirmation, presumably the AC, the building isn't used after school closes at the end of June. So we're talking about the month of June for AC and maybe some of May. If, so September. Month to two months of use. I mean, not to say that, you know, being in a hot class, hot, unair conditioned, poorly ventilated classroom shouldn't be acceptable. But I just want to get a sense of if there's a potential use of the building and the AC beyond the end of the school year. There are sometimes our summer school there um, for the district. I don't know if that is always the case. Last year, we didn't have any, but I know a few years ago, they had a couple of camps there in the summer. It's also hot in September these days. And October. Yeah. And December. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
All right, so are we good with the schools? I'll find that information out. Um, town hall, door accessibility improvements. So this was submitted by our town hall steward. Um, it's a volunteer position we created for somebody who takes care of the town hall. Um, so they're looking for, it's really door openers, right? Um, some of the doors in there are, are heavy and are difficult for, for people who have um, either mobility issues or, or strength issues um, to open them. So that's the, essentially what they're, what they're seeking. Well, it's not required by the ADA. Mm -hmm. The ADA requires that, that doors have a certain, um, when you pull it or push it, it's a certain, uh, I think it's a certain PSI that you have to, that the doors have to open under. And while these do that, I think it's, they've, they've been difficult for, mm -hmm. uh, for some folks. So, um, that's what this proposal is about. Are you talking about one of those where you press the handicap button and it opens automatically? You know? Um, that's what it seemed to be I, from the description. Okay. I believe so. Um, He's talking about I'm, paddles being pressed. I assume that that's right. right. I know there's also power assist doors, right? That once you sort of push on it, it opens up. I'm not sure which one of these is being discussed, but. Well, what they're referring to here is they want to replace them with a spring-loaded paddle operated openers. You read the details. Yeah. So yes, those are basically your ADA doors. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, this is this was this was the proposal. Um, yeah, I mean, I also know that there's the power assist doors that you pull it a little bit and it goes. Um, and maybe things are simpler now with with Bluetooth and things like that, but it would seem like it would get quite expensive if we had to wire all of those. But it, the concept is the same that these doors are difficult for folks to open and we'll figure out the best solution. Could we ask Neil to dig into other options, like various options instead of just the one? Yeah, we can get clarification. I can also reach out to Mark too, Mark Boussier too. He's the one that Neil had spoken yep. with. Mark's okay. done a lot of great volunteer work for, I guess I could call it volunteer work for us <laughs> at the town hall, so. Okay. So I'll find out a little bit more specifics about the system that they. It says the electrical will be $500 per door. It's explained here and there already pretty much. Right. Just, yeah. just the question of whether there are other options, if that's the only option. Well, you can't get a assist door without power. Well, yeah, there are. And yeah, there are it has to have a mechanism to operate the spring loaded to open it. Yeah, there are doors that, that have like an hydraulic assist that's a little easier to push than just having not needing the electric. Mm -hmm. So that's the question is if there's just another option or if that's the only one. If that's the only one, then we look at that. But yeah, I'll ask, sure. Um, next one, highway department, new dump truck and plow. Replace 2008 F550. So F550, that's the small, the small dump truck. Well, I guess we'll call it a small dump truck, right? Um, it's 2008. Um, it's been on the plan for a while, Keith's pretty good about trying to plan these um, replacements. Um, I guess we could find out a little bit more about sort of mileage and condition, um, but he says it's 
I can find out what he means by it's on its last legs. I guess that's not very <laughs> clear. Uh... Well, if it's like the rest of the stuff, it means he's welded it and fixed it as many times as he can. Right. He did mention, yeah, <laughs> having having has it's having repaired it many times. Um, but it's a truck that's it used quite often, um, and it's thirteen years old. Um, so I'll get condition and mileage and things like that because that's what people like to hear about. Um, so can you just explain the, the handwritten note purchased in FY23, first payment in FY24? So we're committing funds in FY23, but they're not going to be expended until FY24? Yeah, so this is really a note to myself because um, he talks about it can be left for FY24. Um, so what would happen is we would borrow the money if this is really no for myself and for the finance committee, really, the proposal would be we would borrow the money, um, in fiscal year 23 and purchase the truck. So, but our first actual payment on the loan would happen in fiscal year 24. Uh -huh. I, I had a, a thought on the Keith's got three things in the next two years coming up. And while I know we're not supposed to talk about the financing, there's a question of interest rates that are low now and figure to go up. Might we want to at least consider putting before the finance committee like a bigger bond, you know, bigger borrowing <clears throat> for all of these now while rates are low rather than pushing it off to next year when it'll be more expensive? Because he's got the F-150 coming up next year as well, the dump truck and uh, the, the tractor, all, all three in the next two years. So we could certainly put that bug in their ear, but isn't that, that's for them to decide if that's- Well, yeah, but I, I, yeah. I think yeah. that at least this committee should recognize the, or alert them to that yeah. possibility. Yeah, makes sense, yep. Yeah. Pretty sure um, you find that these are all part of his uh, overall plan for 10 years. Right. I was just looking at the next two years. There are three major pieces of equipment under consideration. Well, let's not look backwards at all the other equipment we just bought. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not doing that. Um, so I'll find out condition mileage and it, how many times he's, or He's going to tell me he's fixed it a million times, but for the F-550, just so if anybody asks us, we have that information. Uh, same thing with the tractor, right? This was originally um, planned for in the larger outlook. This was originally going to be funded in 24, um, but he's asked to move it up. Um, and he says because they're having electrical issues and some parts of it are Obsolete. I would assume that means he can't get them. That is um, true. Yep. Not, no, not surprising for a 20-year-old piece of equipment. Yeah. That's what eBay's for. <laughs> what, to um, buy it on eBay and get the wrong part? Yeah. <laughs> so if we're going to think about the if we're also going to think about replacing the, let's talk about the proposal for the, if we talk about accelerating that purchase. So what he's proposing is that it's, that Ford has come out with um, F-150 all electric vehicles. Um, this, so this would also necessitate, likely necessitate the installation of charging station somewhere. Um, and that's, that's really for, I guess the, the select board and the administration to figure out. But um, if we are going to move towards a, and I assume that's the way the world's going, is towards an all electric fleet, even of larger vehicles, and then um, we're going to have to think about our charging infrastructure. Um, we'll no longer have a fuel tank by the side of the highway garage, which hopefully will be 
not there for forever. Um, but we'll have, you know, charging stations and things like that. So that's mm -hmm. also something that we'll have to think about in our, in our capital plan. Um, okay. And it's going to be a challenge because he, Keith originally came to me and was talking about how do we get charging stations at department heads houses? Cause you know, the ones that have 24 seven responsibility, have their vehicles with them and how would they fuel them up? And the best time to charge them is at night and all those, you know, and all these types of things, um, which I think that idea is, is problematic for a lot of reasons, but um, I also would anticipate that that charging technology would hopefully increase. And I think it has in terms of rapid chargers and the fast chargers, I think can, can, can charge vehicles pretty quickly. Um, and also you would think if we're just driving them around town, we're not gonna sort of drain the battery every day, I would think. Um, Anyways, I've gone off on a tangent, but it's also something that we need to think about as terms of capital purchases if if we're going to need these charging stations. Right. Well, it's, but there's something else at that point that that raises with the tractors in particular. Does the technology exist to have those vehicles electric now, or is that on the horizon? Or do those have to be gasoline powered? For the tractor? For, well, the, there are two tractors. There's, uh, well, no, it's a tractor and the dump truck. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they, well, I'm, he only told me that Ford is just making the F-150 electric. Yeah, and he won't be able to get one in, to, uh, <clears throat> well, maybe, maybe by the end of 23, but <clears throat> I signed up for one this summer and I don't think I'm going to see it for a year. Okay. So. All, all the more reason to get online, you know, get the order in. Yep. Yeah. But I don't but think- I'm talking about the other things. Are they, you know, down the road, are we looking at those being electric or should we be putting more money into a diesel, the diesel engines? I, I don't believe there's really any electric tractors available yet. Uh, and certainly no large trucks. No. <clears throat> okay. I. This is I, don't, I don't know that world, and I don't know, you know, yeah. if there's anything even, you know, on the horizon for it. Isn't that truck part of a, a pickup part of a grant too, Brian? They're going for a grant on it. For which one? The, the uh, F-150 pickup. The electric. Um, I'm not sure what incentives are out there. He talked about I, I how it was... that It looked like there was one at least one state incentive that might be up to $7,500 on a $50,000 vehicle. Yeah. Can we monetize and, that? And there could be others. Not, that, I just looked very quickly and saw that. Yeah. And also there, there could well be grants or state programs for the charging station that would pay for most yep. or all of it. Yeah. I, yeah, I think I think the point is if we go electric, we're going to need those. So it's going to be a capital purchase. Um, and whatever, whatever other work needs to be done to, you know, to make it make ready work for the charging stations, I guess. Um, so in terms of need for the F for the F one fifty, the replacement of the F one fifty, are we comfortable with that? So this would this would have been a submission that's a little bit later in the document. Um, well, I wouldn't buy Torres. I wouldn't put it in the same priority as the first two that he needs now, the truck yeah. and the uh, tractor. I I wouldn't put it in that priority for need, but as Nicholas pointed out, there may it may require higher priority to get into the pipeline to get one. Yeah, it, it's only a hundred dollar deposit to, to, to get into the into the queue. So okay, but the uh, town would still need to commit to it. Right. right. Town meeting or select board right. or whatever. I'll find out the same information about about this vehicle as well. 
Um, and we can talk about how we want to prioritize it at the at a future meeting. The um, and the, the charging cables are not crazy money unless you go with a really fast charger. So it might right. be a, a thousand or fifteen hundred might be plenty to get a, a medium level charger. That's my guess. Or at least yeah. a charger while we wait for a grant or whatever for a full charging station. Yeah. Yep. Um, let's talk about vehicles. Police department, new police cruiser replaced 2018. I think I have the same questions on this one as I do for Keith. Um, this is the frontline cruiser. So this is the marked vehicle. Um, I'll get mileage condition. Mm -hmm. um, again, Jim is also the one who, who tries to plan out his replacements. I think, I think he puts the frontline cruiser proposes every five years that it gets changed out. Yeah, um, sure. there's a cruiser every five. And then the the chief's vehicle, I think, is proposed every six. Um, One rolls back into uh, <clears throat> yeah. Um, so it's one of our planned replacements. I think the one that he's looking at, um, if there's funding available, would, would be a hybrid. Um, I mentioned to him electric, um, and he, I don't think he looked into it that much. Um, but it's, I, I think, I, I don't think he has a comfort level with an electric cruiser, but I don't know that, I don't know that we've looked into it seriously, I guess, at that, at this point. And I don't even know if they're available. I imagine they are, but I don't know how widely they're available. They'd be very quiet, sort of sneaking up. So it would be good. <laughs> yeah, so maybe, ask... maybe maybe he Jim can do some research into you know have any other departments gotten electric vehicles and you know, are they available? Yeah. And do they have the right engine performance for what police cruisers typically need? They have incredible pickup. Do they? Yeah. Amazing acceleration. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll check with him on the condition and the mileage of, of the one that they have now. Um, and we'll see. I, I, what he typically does is usually the, the, so we usually have three cruisers that the one that gets taken out, the frontline cruiser usually gets moved to a, um, a detail car. A detailed vehicle, um, so it provides lights and safety during the details that the officers do, um, and then it usually um, surpluses the the existing one. So um, I'll follow up with him. Um, so upgrade treasure collector software. Yeah. Um, this is on. This has been on Lynn's it hasn't been she hasn't submitted it for capital but it's been on it's been on her list for a while um the current software that treasury collector uses is is a company called point um and it's really well this is my opinion um it's really outdated um i'm pretty sure it's still ms dos based um so oh my god you could put it in the same category as that New Holland tractor. You can't get parts and you don't can't get anybody to fix it. Right. And so it does the very basics. Um, the company's clearly not, they're just riding it out. Um, uh, presumably until enough people leave, then they're just going to close up shop. They're not investing in it. Um, I don't know how much longer computers would be able to run it. Um, I, I don't know that end of it, uh, Brent probably does, but, um, it's MS DOS based. It is, it is really antiquated. Yeah. Well, it's um, going to get, it's going to get to a point. You won't even be able to upload it onto a new, uh, newer software yeah. operating system. 
Yeah. I, I thought Lynn made a very clear case in, in her proposal. And I agree with that. I, I think my biggest questions were really, you, know, you, you get into these kinds of software acquisitions and I, I didn't necessarily come away from her, from her description with a clear sense of like how thoroughly she looked at options and you know, she's, she compared a couple, but where did, were those the only two available? I mean, typically when you do these kinds of things, you, you put out an RFP or you get some proposals or, so anyway, I just ended up having questions. I had no qualms at the, the need and the justification but I definitely had questions about, I guess I, I wasn't sure I was confident that her pricing or the two options she picked are the best and it'd be bad if you end up with a kind of buyer's remorse. You, you leave an antiquated piece of software and then you jump into something and you've been sold something that looks shiny and new and it'll do everything you need until you start using it. Do you well, feel, Brian, that she's gathered, like it, it, these options she, are solidly supported from other towns? I think she's followed the road that the, the software that we're currently using has qualifications with the state as well. So you just can't go out and get your own software package. That's true, to do that's certainly true. We, we have to stay with the overall program and just do a update really of the yeah, so problem I have the problem I had with Lynn's note was that she really didn't come down preferring one or the other, which makes it hard to judge a cost when that's not for us. That's not for us to do. Well no, it's, but it's for her to give us a recommendation of it's it shouldn't be for us to make the decision of which software she should have. She should right. give us a choice, a preference of what she is recommending. Yeah, and I'll, I'll follow up with her. I talked with her today uh, before I left the office and I think she's still a little bit on the fence. So VADAR, the, the VADAR program is the one that's most commonly used across the Commonwealth. Um, and there's a pretty, there's a pretty good, um, there's a pretty good network of, of, you know, treasure collectors across the state. There's the Mass Treasure Collectors Association, um, similar organizations for town clerks and town administrators. So uh, there's a lot of back and forth as to what systems are working. VADAR is the one that I think is most commonly used. Uh, QDS is used by a couple of our neighbors. I think she said Shelburne and one other town. Um, but I, I agree that I think it would be good sort of to make a decision as to the way that she would like to go. The benefit to QDS is like, I guess it, so we use a regional accounting program with FERCOG um, and we use their, their software, which I think it's called MIP Fund Accounting Program. Um, and apparently the modules with the modules, 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 whatever it's called, um, with QDS are, I guess, seem as can be integrated into the accounting software. So it's a little bit easier um, for the treasurer collector and accountant to share data, which now it's sort of a weird three-step process where Lynn has point and then she moves everything to an Excel spreadsheet, which goes to the accountant. It's just way past time to do this. <laughs> but the question is, which one do we do, right? Yeah. Um, so I'll see if she has a recommendation. I'll, I'll push her on it. Okay. I mean, I, I guess if we wanted to, we could, uh, you know, recommend replacing the software budget, you know, with a budget number at whatever the higher number would be. And then if, it, if right. she goes the that other way, sense. we could, you know, spend less. Yep, or, that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. But ultimately she's got to make the decision of what software she wants to use. Right. We don't. I don't know if this is a stretch, but um, I wonder if this is something else that could be under the COVID relief money because they can't work from home with this older software something to consider yeah that's yep. a good idea all right so the last two um 
so this one I found out about like two days ago. Um, well, and then the other one I found about three days ago. So um, new fire door for the library. We had a, a uh, pre-construction meeting at the library on Wednesday, Tuesday. Um, and we were in the main room and they were looking at the fire door um, that if you could picture it, if you're facing into the library, it's on the right hand side um, out of the sort of the main area of the library there. Um, and apparently it doesn't, it should be a fire door and it's not a fire door, um, I think is what it comes down to. Um, but I, I wanna ask for a, a little bit more detail um, as to the reasoning beyond this, um, beyond the, the two sentence email that I got. In the past, uh, the building inspector has been very flexible about the library and whether it m meets all the building codes. Yeah. I also know that that door is not new. Uh, so I have ta I've either. taken it down and clamped and re-glued it at least one time. Um, so it's not in, you know, it has been in failure already at least once. Yeah. And that just goes out to uh, stairs, right? In the yeah. back. Yeah. Yep. I know they had talked about, well, let's put a ramp there. And it was like, wow, that's going to get expensive. It, it goes um, out to like fire escape type stairs. Is I, That's my memory that probably aren't that code safe either. Right. Probably not, certainly not ADA compliant. No. Yeah. <laughs> it would be, it would be a, yes, it would be a non-accessible <laughs> entrance. Well, um, they're not owned by the MBTA, Nichols. <laughs> I'll get some more information on that. But does thanks, Nick, even, for letting me know. Does this even meet the like the 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 amount of money that our threshold is for capital planning? Uh, the threshold we have set is five five thousand. So I guess it barely makes it. Yeah. Um, okay. Did you have a five thousand dollar trailer on our? on our thing a year or two ago? Trailer? Wasn't there a trailer for the cemetery? You want a utility trailer, right? Maybe no. it was $1,500. Oh. Right, yes, the utility trailer, that's right. But if that was, was that put on the capital planning? I feel like it was, but I don't know. No, because it's only, they're only like $1,500. Yeah. yeah, they're not $5,000. I'm just giving you a hard time. Thank you. And then uh, also when I was at the library, I looked at the, their patron computers and they're about seven years old and- They're terrible. They, I don't, I don't have, it. terrible. I think we can just say terrible. <laughs> I think they need new screens. They need new, they need new computers, new screens. They need it, new everything. Um, I, I, yeah, I was kind of embarrassed to even look at it. <laughs> So they um, can get, you know, per unit, assuming, you know, this is just for web browsing and stuff like that. They probably wouldn't even need to spend more than $1,000 per computer to get like an all-in-one with a screen, a mouse, a keyboard, everything you need. So 5,000 is comfortably easy for them to replace all four computers with quite capable new machines. They may need to bring in a consultant or something to transfer the software or whatever they need. Right. It's probably a town volunteer who could help them. Know anybody? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the last one, the last two are the water department. Um, truck replacement saving. Well, this is sort of a savings, but truck replacement savings. Um, they try to set aside 5,000 each year. When it comes time to replace their truck, they have the money saved. Um, and then water storage, tank cleaning and inspection. That's something that's done, I wanna say every five years, maybe? 
I think um, I think it's five. So and yeah, it, I know I know somebody who would know that. It's extreme, <laughs> and it's extremely important. Having gone to a four-hour water tank class yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for a great day. I can't believe it's only six thousand dollars. I'll double check with Wayne. It's because they've got to put a diver into the tank. Yep. With a toothbrush, right? And you just scrub it. The vacuum. <laughs> and to get them through those little pipes must be a challenge. Yeah, but there's no more manganese left, so we should be all set. <laughs> oh, wait, it's the five years of manganese that's built up in there before you got the filters in, right? Right. Um, all right, so that's 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 all I have. So I have a list of questions that I will send out to the various folks um, and try to get that information. Um, and I will try to get it. it. Does the 27th still work for most people? It, the exact timing on the 27th doesn't work for me. I've got a 5.30 to 6.30 meeting that just got scheduled in the last few days. So should, can we go, can people do 6.30 or is that not going to work? Uh, I can do it. I can do it. Not because yep. I want to, but. No. <laughs> hey, it's a four hour water class. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for accommodating me. I get to. The, the other meeting is the Frontier Capital spending committee so they already so got is their that money, just so. a decision we're moving it to six or six thirty it's thirty right six thirty yeah yep. darius doesn't like any meetings running over an hour so i'm fairly safe there <laughs> so are there any of these that we want show and tell or as i guess show and tell as a group or I could let the department head know people might swing by and ask a question or want to see something. I personally, as I've as heard all of these and read all of them, I don't know that there's any one of them where if I were to look, it would substantially impact my decision. The inside of the water tank? <laughs> I do want to, yeah, let's swim in there. <laughs> I think it's useful to go to the highway department. Um, it's, it's, there's a, it's a lot of money and uh, it just seems good for uh, this committee to be up on the, in, the infrastructure issues going on there, I think, to see the vehicles. See what Keith means by a million times. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think so. I don't know. I mean, we'll stop otherwise- by when, Stop by when you get a minute and see if- yeah, that's fine. We, we might, since it might come up, also get an idea if he has any thoughts on where, you know, how he would orient the charging a charging station. Yeah. In, inevitably, one will be there. Right. Got to be in the vicinity for a new town garage. I was going to say, how about after the new garage? Uh, I, I was just going to say, we also at some point we also need to talk about the yellow elephant in the room, mm -hmm. um, which is the highway garage and. Yeah. At, at some point, I think we're going to have to, that this is going to have to be addressed and it's going to be a design process. And... Well, it's just a point of interest for the rest of the committee. The finance committee is putting money aside every year for major structures or structural problems with our town buildings. So we wow. are starting to put some money away for it for any of our buildings. That should be the first. We'll be only lucky if this windstorm on Friday can knock it down. <laughs> <laughs> Collect the insurance, there we go. Hmm. Well, as I'm happy to visit the highway garage on my own. If other people, if we don't wanna do a group visit, that's fine. I go by there all the time to stop and talk to them, so I don't have to go again. 
So I'd go because it would be news to me. So maybe Nicholas, we coordinate. Yeah, Nick, I'll go along with you, Nicholas. We'll make it a deputation. <laughs> Anyone else? No, I'll go. I, trust, I trust him on what vehicles need to be replaced. He's very good at the job. I would go too. All right. Why don't we oh, or Nate would keep. talk about dates maybe next week for a, a visit? Do better than what we did a couple of years ago, picking a day. So make sure you pick one that don't snow. <laughs> yeah, snow or like five Much. degrees off. Oh, yeah. we're freezing on that one. Now, Keith would probably like it if we pick a day that snows and one of the machines breaks down on him. <laughs> Good. Then, then you get an airflow. <laughs> Can I move to adjourn? Yes. Let's Wait a minute. What's the, what's the next meeting now? <laughs> the next, next meeting will be 6 30, but what date? 27. Two weeks from. Yep. Yeah, 6 30. Thank you. And there'll be a new Zoom link. All right. All right. Okay. I second a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Thanks for organizing us, Brian. All right. All right. We'll see you guys later. Thank you. All right. Good, night. Good night, everyone. All right. Thank you. Bye now. Yeah.